Hello, my name is Jeff Jenkins, and my case study presentation is on popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. I'll start off with a little bit of patient history. 29-year-old male presents with increased difficulty jogging, leading to increased sharp calf pain and cramping. His pain diminishes with rest. An orthopedic and neurosurgeon were consulted with no definite diagnosis. A vascular surgeon was consulted next and diagnosed him with a preliminary diagnosis of compartmental syndrome. His symptoms include normal pulse at rest, a gradual loss of foot and lower leg pulse when he bent his knee, bilateral calf pain while exercising but diminished at rest, and a feeling of coolness, discolorization, and numbness in his calf. The imaging of choice for PAS include x-rays, which are generally negative, color Doppler ultrasound, which provides the best preliminary findings, CT, which allows grading or classification of PAES, which we'll discuss a little bit later, arteriography with contrast, which provides a diagnosis confirmation if needed, subtraction angiography, which allows for mapping of collaterals for surgery, and lastly, MRI, which is best used for surgical management in showing the type of entrapment condition. The imaging findings as this is an ultrasound class, I'm going to concentrate primarily on the ultrasound findings with a little bit of extra stuff in there. So lower extremity duplex ultrasound was performed and showed normal signal at rest, but was observed with a major signal reduction on flexion extension, along with reactive hyperemia or discolorization and warming with the foot in a neutral position. As far as pathophysiology is concerned, PAES is part of a group of conditions where vascular and neurologic symptoms occur due to the compression of the popliteal artery, vein, and or nerve. The compression occurs because the popliteal artery becomes blocked from passing medial to and under the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle, essentially compressing the vessel closed. This image or graphic shows what the normal anatomy should look like. The popliteal artery runs medially to the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. There are four basic entrapment classifications for PAS as we talked about earlier. Type 1 demonstrates the medial head of the gastrocnemius attaching more laterally. Type 2 demonstrates an abnormal course of the popliteal artery with entrapment. Type 3 demonstrates an abnormal muscle band attachment and type 4 demonstrates the distal popliteal artery coursing posteriorly to the popliteus muscle. There are a few other classification types, but these were the four main or primary classifications. As far as incidence, etiology, or epidemiology are concerned, PAES refers to a condition of claudication or reduced blood flow from the compression of the popliteal artery by muscles and other tissues. This compression reduces blood flow to the lower extremities, which in turn can cause arterial damage. This condition generally happens to athletes under the age of 30, predominantly male athletes. As muscles grow because of muscle building from exercise, there is a greater risk for compression of these arteries, a sort of overuse in injury. Less than 3% of individuals are predisposed with PAES conditions, and about half of those individuals experience PAES bilaterally. In most cases, the individuals are asymptomatic, though. PAES occurs when there is abnormal musculoskeletal tenderness conditions surrounding the popliteal artery. Musculoskeletal tenderness structures become more or overworked and built up and with continual compression and decompression while exercising. As far as treatment options are concerned, if PAES is diagnosed early enough, surgical release of the artery and the surrounding muscular tendinous structures are, is performed. This is the procedure of choice. If the artery is occluded, stenotic, or aneurysmal, then surgical reconstruction of the vasculature is required. If decompression efforts are not enough, a vein graft can be used, and the graft is generally harvested from the opposite leg's saphenous vein. The chance of re-entrapment is as high as 30%, so 
The diagnosis and treatment at an early stage will greatly decrease the need for vascular reconstruction and hopefully decrease the chance of re-entrapment. As far as surgical, surgical prognoses are concerned, the patient is discharged following decompression surgery. They generally return to normal activities within four weeks and the patient becomes asymptomatic after complete wound healing. Follow-up clinical visits demonstrate the ability to stand for prolonged periods of time without calf or foot discomfort if interventions are successful. These PAES images demonstrate the multimodality importance of diagnosis. The upper left image shows colored Doppler ultrasound with a linear 12 MHz transducer positioned transversely with the patient prone. The left side shows normal flow in the rest position, whereas the image on the right shows complete obliteration of the popliteal artery, arterial and venous flow because the medial and lateral heads of the gastrocnemius muscle. The upper right image shows an axial T1 MRI demonstrating the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle laterally displaced resulting in crowding of the popliteal fossa and lateral displacement of popliteal arteries. The lower left image shows an axial T2 MRI image of the bilateral popliteal artery occlusion and the lower right image shows a 3D coronal MRI angiogram performed with plantar flexion demonstrating bilateral occlusion next to the medial and lateral heads of the gastrocnemius muscles and on the left side by the plantaris muscle. Clinical pathways. Differential diagnoses for PAS include cystic adventitial disease of the popliteal artery, thrombos, popliteal artery aneurysm, chronic exertional compartmental syndrome, muscle strain, medial tibial stress syndrome, nerve entrapment syndrome, and referred pain from lumbar disc herniation. These images demonstrate the surgical management and procedural processes. The, the upper image shows a CT pre-divisional image shows the musculotendinous division with arterial reconstruction of the supraarticular popliteal occlusion. The lower image is a 3D CT post-divisional image showing the pop, pop interposition vein graft. The graft was harvested from the opposite legs grit saphenous vein as we talked earlier. So discussion. Long-term outcomes of the surgical procedures of PAES are satisfactory. Outcomes may be greater when the lesion is limited to the popliteal artery region versus the inclusion of more distal areas. There are limited publications reporting extended outcomes of surgical treatment of PAES. Overall, the outcomes of PAES surgery are satisfactory and limb loss in an atypical occurrence because, because arterial occlusion in PS demonstrates a slow and chronic evolution, potentially permitting collaterals to develop. The vast majority of cases consist of a simple release of the popliteal artery without any vascular reconstruction. And that is my present, uh, demonstration.